<laughs> wow, what a crowd. This is amazing. This is amazing. And it just... Uh, <laughs> a joy to be in this building this morning with all of you. Um, it's a great, great day in Massachusetts as we come together to celebrate this historic piece of legislation. Um, it's really, really amazing. I want to begin by uh, thanking all who made it possible, our Speaker of the House and Senate President, our Public Health Committee Chairs, uh, Rep. Marjorie Decker, thank you, Senator Julian Sear. Our conference committee members, Representative Mike Moran, Representative Kim Ferguson, Senator Cindy Friedman, Senator Liz Miranda, and Senator Patrick O'Connor. Other legislators who played critical roles include Senator Becca Rausch, Representative Brandi Fluker Oakley, Rep. Carol Fiola, Rep. Pat Haddad. Rep. Kay Khan, Rep. Lindsay Sabadoso, Rep. Manny Cruz, Rep. China Tyler, and Senator Joe Comerford, among others. And we're also joined here today, uh, in addition to those folks, by Senator Lovely, Senator Crichton, Representative Gregoire, Representative Holmes, Representative Cruz, Representative Williams, Representative Howard, Rep. Duffy, uh, Rep. Shand, Rep. Kasner, uh, Senator Robin Kennedy, Representative Worrell, Representative Kane, um, among others, uh, who uh, will we'll, we'll name as, as, as we spot you. Look, so many advocates and experts helped champion this important bill. The members of the Special Legislative Commission on Racial Inequities in Maternal Health, we thank them for their recommendations. We thank. We thank Emily Arnesta and the members of the Bay State Birth Coalition. Way to go. Way to go. Reproductive Equity Now, Birth Equity and Justice, the Mass Postpartum Depression Fund, all of the dedicated providers, midwives, doulas, nurses, doctors, and more. Uh, members of our team, I'm joined here today by our Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, um, by our Under Secretary of Human Services Mary McGowan, Maternal Health Leaders join us today, Elaine Fitzgerald Lewis, Mass Health Bureau Director of Family Health and Nutrition, Sarah Krinsky, DPH Deputy Director of Perinatal and Maternal Health Policy, and Monica Sai, Chief of Provider, Family and Safety Net Programs. So we thank all of you. Look. So today we do this from a place of strength and collective strength. Massachusetts was recently voted the best state to live in in the entire country for women, the best state to have a baby, and the best state to raise a family. We have the best health insurance coverage of any state in the country, over 98%. And our health and human services team, working with communities and providers across the state, are breaking new ground in health equity, putting a special focus on maternal care. So we have a lot to be proud of. We also know that these number one rankings conceal disparities that we're addressing today, that are deep, that are longstanding, and that are unacceptable to all of us. They don't show the mom who's struggling with postpartum depression. They don't reflect the experience of too many black and brown women and low-income women in our state who have fewer options and too often are not seen or not heard. We want to be the best. We want to be the best and we want to be the healthiest place in the world, not just for some, but for all families, all women, and all people. To get there, we'll take intentional, smart, and determined effort by everyone. 
That's the determination that this wonderful piece of legislation represents. That is the work it makes possible, and it is why I am so grateful for what the legislature has done and the opportunity that I have to be able to sign this into law today. This These measures in this bill will make it safer, will make it more equitable, will make it more, uh, will make it easier to grow families here in Massachusetts to take care of one another, and that makes us stronger. It will give expecting parents, no matter their zip code, the freedom to make the best health care decisions that they can make. It will enable more families to benefit from the outstanding care provided by midwives and doulas in our state. And it will advance our progress in expanding mental health care, especially for perinatal and postpartum needs. Look, maternal health care, it's a national crisis. There's been a lot of talk about this, a lot of study of this, and I am just really proud that in Massachusetts, we are once again leading on this issue. We've seen the kind of progress we can make when we all work together. We've taken some amazing steps forward in the last few weeks to ensure that families can thrive here in our state by finding a home they can afford, by getting access to great schools, access to childcare, and today, by giving birth and growing your family with the very best care available. We're committed to putting this bill into action and making that value a reality for every person and every family in this state. And it is now my pleasure to introduce one of the key proponents of this legislation, Chair Marjorie Decker. Thank you. This is an amazing moment. It's an amazing day. And I'm so excited that we have arrived here, something that we're all very proud of. And it's also not lost on me that the day of this gathering, of this important gathering, it's also the 104th anniversary of the day that women finally were granted the right to vote with the ratification of the 19th Amendment. <laughs> This bill acknowledges that women and birthing people have not been fully served by our health care systems. It's evident in our national health and birthing outcome data that when we compare our country to other countries of similar economies and democracies, that we are not doing well and the disparities are clear. There are so many people to thank today, um, so I will not walk us through the bill, but try to do my best and I will be providing gratitude for years to come. But I want to start with thanking Speaker Mariano. When I approached him about doing an omnibus bill, he immediately provided me with unwavering support, encouragement, and important staff resources to develop a comprehensive maternal health bill. I knew that we would look to the members of our legislatures, both in the House and the Senate. We would look at all of the maternal health bills that have been filed and worked on for so many years. We would also look to members of our own community. Many of you are here today, and to many of the advocates, and there's so many of you, to many of the members who sat with us on the Racial Inequities and Maternal Health Commission, who weighed in on this, not only through the commission, but who continued to be resources to us seven days a week. There's so many people, and, and this is why this room is so full, and this is why it's so full over here, because this bill really was a birth and a labor of love of so many thousands of people. So thank you. Foundation represents the, hard, the countless hours of so much hard work. It includes, as I said, the recommendations from the Commission, the Commission on Racial Inequities and Maternal Health, and it includes all of the maternal health bills that we could find that had been filed, as well as the recommendations of so many folks here. It's a commitment to the health and the well-being of birthing people and babies, 
a steadfast commitment to reproductive equity and birthing choice, and a continued dedication to advancing racial and economic justice. At a time when access to reproductive health care across the country is under threat, Massachusetts continues to lead the nation as a beacon for safeguarding reproductive health and respecting birthing autonomy. I want to take a moment right now to also honor to honor the names and the lives and the lived life of Anarka, Betsy, Lucy, and all of the unnamed patients of J. Marion Sims. The violence inflicted upon these teenage girls at the cruel and inhumane hands of Sims. They deserve to be remembered as a part of this day. While they were stripped of their autonomy, their safety, and their ability to have children, millions of women across the world have lived longer lives and given birth because of their suffering in what is now recognized as the foundation of modern gynecology, and they are recognized as the mothers of gynecology. This bill is one of the most important steps in honoring Anarka, Betsy, and Lucy and further makes progress on our commitment to address the maternal health crisis that has long affected our communities around the nation, but the racial disparities that have long plagued our health care system and inflicted harm and suffering to women of color and their families. Over the past two decades, rates of pregnancy-associated mortality have risen steadily in the Commonwealth. Birthing outcomes in the U.S. have only gotten worse. And in Massachusetts, we know that black birthing women are dying at two times the rate of white women in Massachusetts, three times nationally, regardless of the income, education, or zip code. This journey has been marked by tireless advocacy and extensive research from those who have shared their personal stories with us to those who have devoted their lives, professions, to, imp to, to improving maternal health outcomes for all families. To all of my colleagues who've worked on this legislation that is reflected in this bill, many of you are here today, and some of you have since left the legislature. Thank you. There are so many of you to thank, and I will not do justice to everyone, but I will try to do for some of you who are here to thank my best, to, th to do my best to thank you. A very, very special thank you to Representative Kay Khan for who over. <laughs> who don't know, Kay is a nurse, and for over 20 years, way before there was a community of all of us behind her, was fighting for the ability to make sure that birthing people and women had the right to give birth with midwives and to license midwives in the state of Massachusetts. Her tenacious commitment, and if you know her, you know that she's tenacious. Her, her tenacious commitment to ensuring that all women and birthing people have access to midwifery care will never, ever be fully appreciated, but it will in my heart, and it will be by the thousands of people who now have better access and coverage to midwifery care. I want to say thank you to my Vice Chair Sally Karens in the Public Health Committee. Thank you to Leader Gregoire, Representative Spiola, Representative Fluker Oakley, Representative Higgins Sabadoza, Representative Cruz, Representative Worrell, Haddad, O'Day, Kushmerik, and of course, my sister in service, Senator Liz Miranda. <laughs> Special thank you to my former co-chair, and who was also one of the co-chairs on the Special Commission, Senator Comerford, who is here with us. I stand here as a mother of two because of the incredible innovation of modern medicine and technology and the care of the oldest profession in our world, my midwives. I'm grateful to know that my children and your children and our constituents will have more options to access coverage and maternal health because of this bill. This bill is centered on equity and ensures that every person has equitable access to comprehensive maternal health care before, during, and after pregnancy. The legislation centers the well-being and the safety as well as all of birthing people and their families. 
This legislation is one of, if not the most comprehensive maternal health bills in the nation. It will reduce racial disparities, close gap in health inequities, and most importantly, it will save lives and bring more joy to families throughout the Commonwealth. And a final thank you goes to my incredible conference me committee chair, Senator Cindy Friedman, who is with us. Thank you, Senator, for all of your work. My fellow conferees, Leader Moran and Representative Ferguson, Senator Miranda and Senator O'Connor, and last but not least at all, the incredible partnership, trust, and dedication to improving health, better health outcomes for everybody also goes to my co-chair in public health, Senator Julian Sear. Thank you to Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for their commitment, for making all of this come to law. With a swift stroke of the pen, this is now the law. To all of the advocates who I will continue to lean on, as we all will, to continue moving this work forward from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And with that, it is my pleasure and it is my honor to pass this off to my conference co-committee chair, Senator Cindy Friedman. Thank you, Representative Decker, for not only the introduction, but for your collaboration. It is really amazing what we can get done when we actually sit down and talk with each other. So um, I'd also like to point out that we got this done. The legislature got this done. So this, despite the actual timelines that the Boston Globe seems to impose on everybody, we are still working in this building, and we are still getting things done. So, um, but I am really appreciative of the close communication that we had through this conferee, uh, conference committee process, and I'm really appreciative of all of the effort that my um, co-chair did to listen and understand and really come out with the best bill. And I really also want to thank the amazing Liz Miranda, who was on the conference committee, who you will hear from, and also Pat O'Connor, who is here and is a man who walks the walk and talks the talk. So, thank you. And thank you, Governor Healy, for your commitment to signing this matter into law. Somehow, I somehow knew you were going to do it. I don't know why, but I just had confidence. So, thank you. Um, pregnancy and becoming a parent should be one of the most exacting times in a person's life. And you're going to hear a lot about this bill. You're going to hear a lot about what it, it does. I want to tell one quick story. When I had my daughter in 1988, I, I became pregnant. And I went and told my grandmother, my nana. And she grabbed my hand and she said, do not go to a hospital. Do not have your children in a hospital. Find a midwife. And she told me the story of her being in the hospital, of going in, of making my grandfather leave, of being alone for hours in, in, um, you know, while she was in labor. And it was a pretty harrowing experience, but it was also amazing to me that she remembered that and that she told me to go get a midwife. And you know what I did? I went and got a midwife. <laughs> and there are lots of things in this bill that are important. But to me, what is the most important thing, and again, what really matters that we put our words behind our actions, that we've actually done something, is what we have done in this bill for midwives and doulas. There is nothing more important than ensuring that everybody, no matter how rich you are, no matter the color of your skin, no matter where you live, has the ability to birth with somebody they know, they trust, that looks like them, and that they understand. It is an incredibly difficult time in a woman's life. It's a wonderful time, it's exciting, it's scary as hell, and having somebody near, near you who understands you and is out for you and not how long it's gonna take or how much it's gonna cost or when the next you know, body needs to come in to birth, is, is beyond words of importance. And it really reflects this is what health equity is. So 
I was sort of the pinch hitter. I'm the chair of uh, Senate chair of healthcare financing. I, as I say, I'm the pinch hitter. I came in to wrap it up, but I came in behind all of these people that have been doing all of this work for so many years. I think it took too long, but we got here and you all should be celebrating yourselves and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I have no doubt that we will continue to work together as we did on this legislation in the coming weeks to get even more done in Massachusetts. And now I'd like to turn the podium over to Tiffany Vassell, Manager of Community Engagement at Neighborhood Birth Center. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Senator Friedman. Thank you. I stand before you today as a mother, a labor and delivery nurse, and a passionate advocate for maternal and infant health who has turned her pain into purpose and power. The passage, thank you, the passage of this bill is more than just a legislative victory. It's a monumental step forward for our community, for Roxbury, for Mattapan, for Dorchester, for all of Boston, for Lynn, for Worcester, for Springfield, Brockton, and the entire Commonwealth. Uh, and, and especially for those of us who have long understood the value of midwifery care. As a mother of two, I know firsthand how deeply personal and transformative the birth experience can be and the care that midwives can provide. This law will ensure that more families have the choice to bring their children into the world in an environment that feels safe, supportive, and aligned with their values. For Neighborhood Birth Center, Boston's first birth center, this is a watershed moment. Our mission is to advance reproductive justice by reintegrating community midwifery. We believe in equitable, compassionate care to all families, especially those who have been historically marginalized. This legislation empowers us to expand our services, offering more families the option to, provide, to experience birth in a setting that prioritizes autonomy, respect, and individualized care. As a black woman and a labor and delivery nurse, I've seen the disparities in maternal health outcomes up close. I'm clear that the whole system, from patients to payers, benefit when we have equitable access to the midwifery model of care. <laughs> the passing of this bill sends a powerful message that we are committed to changing the narrative that every person, regardless of race, income, or background, deserves access to the best possible care. This law is not just about increasing options, it's about advancing justice. It's about recognizing that every family deserves the right to choose how and where they welcome their children into this world and the type of service they receive and with who. And it's about ensuring that these choices are supported by a healthcare system that values and respects every life. Today we celebrate this victory, but tomorrow we continue the work. Because every birthing person, every child, and every family deserves nothing less. Now, I would like to introduce Emily Anesta, the president of Bay State Birth Coalition. <laughs> Emily, thank you for your leadership and your advocacy. You were persistent, and we're here today. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany, that was beautiful. When we founded Bay State Birth Coalition eight years ago to advocate for certified professional midwife licensure, I never dreamed that when we got it done, it would be part of this big, beautiful momnibus bill. Today, Massachusetts law now recognizes the value and importance of midwifery care in every setting a step in our collective efforts to rehumanize birth, as my friend midwife Rebecca Herman said. Midwives have always been here 
from Elizabeth Freeman, known for ending slavery in Massachusetts in the 1780s, also a midwife in Berkshire County, Hannah Porn, a Finnish immigrant imprisoned for practicing midwifery in Gardner in 1909, Shafia Monroe, queen of the midwifery movement who got her start in Boston in the 1970s, Kirsten Kowalski Lane, and Ginny Miller, who opened Seven Sisters Birth Center in Northampton in 2020, Miriam Kalsa and Ann Whitman, who kept me and my daughters, Marguerite and Juliana, safe during my two home births, the midwife who cared for my mother Leah when she gave birth to me, and now all the midwives and future midwives here today, and the many others who are off caring for families right now, midwives save lives. <laughs> The families of Massachusetts will benefit so tremendously from this legislation and what it will lead to. More families will have, have access to the option of midwifery care, of a home birth, of a birth center in their own community. Thank you, Governor Healy, Rep Decker, Senator Friedman, Senator Miranda, and Rep Fluker Oakley, and all the legislators who are up here. Of course, longtime champion of midwives, Rep Kay Khan, and Senator Becca Rausch. Senator Comerford, Creighton, Sierra, Rep Cruz, and every legislator who voted unanimously to pass this bill, and all the hardworking staff behind them. <laughs> I also want to express my gratitude, um, as others have said, to the Commission on Racial Inequities in Maternal Health, whose work brings us closer to eliminating structural racism and achieving healthy outcomes for everyone. I'm so proud to have been part of this collective victory alongside all of you beautiful people who are here and so many others, including the dozens of organizations in our coalition. Now, I'm incredibly honored to introduce my friend, the inimitable Dr. Ndidi Amaka Amuta Onukaga. Her, uh, her introduction is, is too long. She does so many things. I'll say a few words. Uh, she is the Julia A. Okoro Professor of Black Maternal Health at Tufts University School of Medicine. She is the director and founder of the Center for Black Maternal Health and Reproductive Justice and the Mother Lab. She, is also, she was also an appointee to the Massachusetts Commission on Racial Inequities in Maternal Health and also now to the Federal Health and Human Service Committee on Infant and Maternal Mortality. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. And she's nine months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Momnibus signing day! <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you to Emily for your incredible introduction. I'm so proud of the work that we've done together and the sisterhood that we've developed. Um, in the name of Maternal Health Equity for Massachusetts Families, this is an incredible day. So as she already mentioned, I'm the Julia A. O'Carroll Professor, but what you guys may not know is Julia O'Carroll is my grandmother who's a traditional birth attendant and midwife in Nigeria. And when I got my endowed professorship, they said I could name it after anybody I wanted, so I picked the midwife. <laughs> um, so um, for you who may not be familiar with the work we do at the Center for Black Maternal Health and Reproductive Justice, we're the first of our kind in the country, the only one that really focuses on the intersection of maternal health research, workforce development, community engagement, and policy. I mean, I was asked to speak today talking about my work as a um, commissioner on the racial inequities for Maternal Health Commission, an incredible group of people who really champion this work, and also as a black maternal health scholar and researcher and as a mom. Um, two years ago, the commission provided recommendations to reduce racial inequities in maternal health across the state. The rates of pregnancy-associated mortality, infant death, and black maternal mortality in Massachusetts were abhorrent and rising. 
And while we knew our call to action would not be a cure-all, it would move us in the right direction. Now, not all of our recommendations have made it into law yet. And I say yet because we still have more work to do. But Bill H4999 is the right direction forward. The new policy addresses family and community engagement, public health infrastructure, and healthcare systems improvement, which are all key elements to the multifaceted approach needed to improve maternal health outcomes. By promoting access to midwifery care and changing regulations for freestanding birth centers like the Neighborhood Birth Center. <laughs> that, that, that I'm a proud board member of. Um, this legislation empowers families with more choices in how they bring their children into the world. It recognizes the crucial role that midwives play in providing safe, personalized, and compassionate care, especially for black and brown communities who have unjustly faced these disparities that we've already heard today. This legislation strengthens our healthcare system by integrating midwifery, doula, and perinatal mental health services into the broader spectrum of maternal care. By supporting midwives and inclusion of doula and community health workers in our care teams, we are supporting healthier pregnancies, reducing unnecessary medical interventions, better diagnosing perinatal mental health issues during the postpartum period, and creating a more just and equitable system for all. Massachusetts is taking a bold step toward ensuring that every family, regardless of your background or your zip code, has access to the care that they deserve. Thank you, Governor Healy. Thank you, legislatures in the House and the Senate. Thank you to our champion, Senator Miranda. Thank you to Marjorie Decker, House of Representatives, all the fellow advocates and supporters who have helped to usher this bill into existence. Together, we are paving the way for a future where racial inequities and maternal health are eradicated, the lives of birthing people and their babies are saved and can thrive, and where all birth options are respected and accessible. Thank you so much. Today, this afternoon, I have the proud pleasure of introducing our next speaker, Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley. <laughs> Representative, <laughs> Rep yes. Representative Oakley is a true Bostonian through and through. She's our state representative for the 12th Suffolk District, serving parts of Dorchester, Hyde Park, Mattapan, and Milton. As the House co-chair of the Ellen Story Commission of Postpartum Depression, Rep. Oakley has made maternal and perinatal mental health a priority for Massachusetts families, especially for those who are people of color. She's an advocate for midwifery care and sponsored legislation expanding access to midwives that has been incorporated into this omnibus bill. She is fiercely protective of her mother, Reverend Brenda A. Fluker, who was delivered by a midwife and who raised her single-handedly, coming from a segregated Deep South. Rep. Oakley has a long-standing passion for education, social justice, law, and a belief in the power of a democracy. Please join me in welcoming her. Um, thank you, doctor, and congratulations. And it's because of my mother. It's always Rep. Fluker, y'all. If you got to pick one, go with Rep. Fluker, because she did all, all of the work. Um, I am so, so grateful, and just have to thank our governor um, for her courageous leadership since the time she has come into office. I don't think y'all understand what it's been like to work with a governor who gets it and truly fights for equity and justice for all. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Governor Haley. I also have to thank Speaker Mariano and Chair uh, Marjorie Decker, whose uh, leadership and guidance has been instrumental since I've come into the House, and she has been such a tenacious advocate for uh, birthing justice and equity in this Commonwealth. And I'm also grateful for the support of both the Black and Latino Caucus, members of whom are with me behind today, and members of the Women's Caucus who helped to support and champion the legislation that was included in this omnibus bill. I'm also grateful to all of the staff, executive directors, chairs, Bay State Birth Coalition, the Ellen Story Postpartum Commission, as well as the Moms Matter <laughs> Acts Coalition. And um, as Dr. Ndidi mentioned, midwifery is a part of the black family history. Um, and we get it from our roots, quite honestly, in the continent of Africa. And in my family story, my mother being raised in the Deep South, it was a segregated South. And she didn't have access, my grandmother that is, to hospital care, simply because of the color of her skin. It wasn't because she couldn't 
couldn't afford it. It was because we quite honestly weren't allowed to enter the hospital. And so midwifery care was just a part of the culture. And sometimes people hear that and they think, oh my gosh, you didn't, weren't born in a hospital? How is that so? The truth of the matter is for black people here in the US, hospitals aren't always the safest option for us. And now we actually have legislation that can make sure, should we choose, that we have access to midwives, which research shows helps to improve our outcomes so we aren't as twice as likely to die in childbirth as our white counterparts. And I think that's the moment to celebrate. Not only does this bill certify midwives and allow them to be covered uh, by MassHealth and others, but also this bill on a personal level takes away the fear that so many black women have of giving birth. I know my best friend from college, she's been married for over 10 years. They tried for seven years to get pregnant. It wasn't until she entered her 41st year of life that she found herself pregnant. And what should have been a moment of celebration, I called her up and she is on the phone sobbing in tears, afraid that she is going to die in the birthing process because she is a black woman. That's the real fear and reality that so many of us have. And because of this bill, I know when it's my turn, come on Lord, when it's my turn, <laughs> I won't have to have that fear. I'll be crying tears of joy that I'm here in Massachusetts and we'll have the midwifery coverage. It's also important to note, and I know this was discussed previously, how black women here in Massachusetts are twice as likely to die in childbirth. And I have to emphasize that is not by virtue of being black. The truth of the matter is when we have the same income, education level, health status uh, and indicators, we're twice as likely to die because of environmental and systemic racism. And I know we throw those words around without actually giving context and color to what they mean, so I just wanna take a moment to educate us on that today. What that looks like, it means, thank you, Chair. <laughs> Chair Williams, Black Latino Caucus, always has my back. Um, what that means when we talk about environmental and systemic racism, systemic racism, for example, are the communities that we were redlined into. It's the environmental justice factors that can be polluting our communities more so than other communities. When we talk about uh, institutional racism, it's the medical bias that so many of us experience. The fact why for black women in particular, when they express their concerns to doctors, studies show that 82% of doctors are more likely to dismiss their concerns and think that they are kind of making it up or don't really have the trouble that they're having. That's an example of, of institutional racism. And then there's environmental racism, and those are the microaggressions, the passive aggressive behavior that some folks experience in the workplace and other communities where they gather, which adds to the internal stress, which then leads to those poor outcomes. So I just want to share that today so that you know it's not because we're black, because trust me, we are black and proud, and we won't say that loud, um, but it's really because we experience so much stress in our environment here that contributes to those outcomes. I also have to give a special shout out to every single person who served on that special commission of racial equities and maternal health because y'all laid the foundation of what a comprehensive equitable piece of legislation could be and I have to commend the governor and everyone who has worked on those pieces of policy because we can actually say that it's not just a very pretty very in-depth report that sits on a shelf but that we made it actionable and meaningful today. We just have to recognize the profound significance of this moment in signing this bill into law, representing the historic commitment to maternal health equity and justice. Massachusetts has already become, by signing this bill, number one in the country for its protections for maternal health, and that is huge. By enacting this law, we are setting a precedent that the health and safety of every single mother and child, regardless of their race or background, is a priority for our Commonwealth. So thank you all for being in this celebratory moment. Thank you to every single person who had, I don't even care if it was a hand, a toe, a scintilla, <laughs> anything in making this happen. Share in this moment and thank you for your time. Um, I'm happy to uh, introduce my sister in service, Senator Liz Miranda. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
similar to me, she's a Boston girl through and through. Uh, and during her time here in the legislature, she shares as the chairperson of the Joint Committee on Racial Equity and Civil Rights, as well as my co-chair on the Ellen Story Postpartum Commission. She has been a stalwart uh, in leading for maternal justice and equity. And I thank her for taking me under her wing in my first term and giving me some of these bills to fight for. And it's a pleasure to have you speak today. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I didn't wear the right mascara, so please. <laughs> That's why um, I can't believe today is actually finally here. After six years in the Massachusetts legislature, four years after filing a bill with Representative Kay Kahn and Senator Becca Rausch to create a commission to study black maternal health in Massachusetts, then co-hosting four big listening sessions across the state, and over 12 plus committee meetings with hundreds of people testifying and producing a finalized report and then working on this issue area for years, learning and listening and crying and pushing through, we are here. And I think we give a round of applause because it's been a long, <laughs> long road. I want to thank Necco Hall, who's standing behind us, and Tamoria, uh, Repo Equity Now, um, then it was NARAL and Gina Frank, I don't know if you're in the room, March of Dimes, the League of Women Voters, Rep Haddad, former Rep Elugardo, Rep Sabadosa, Senate President Spilka and Leader Friedman, Senator Sear and his entire team, my House colleagues and members of the MBLCC, and the other 10 women in the Senate and the 52 in the House, and our allies representing the Women's Caucus, both of these caucuses made this bill and maternal health a priority. The commissioner, commissioners of both the Ellen Story Commission of the Maternal Inequities Commission, but the doulas and the doula coalition across the Commonwealth, the San Center for Black Maternal Health, NEMA, I see Dr. Jo DPH, the Neighborhood Birth Center and the Seven Sisters, who right now is the only birth center in the Commonwealth, but it's gonna be joined by another one. To Black Mamas Matter, to Ancient Song, to the Black Maternal Health Caucus at the federal level, to the D Divine Nine organizations, and for those of you who don't know about the organizations, whether it's Delta Sigma Theta, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Zeta Phi Beta, Sigma Gamma Rho, these Divine Nine organizations, the four black women-led sororities, have been leading on this issue for a very long time, and I just want to say I'm happy to be among you, okay? And the chairman, <laughs> the chairman of the Black and Latino Caucus, you know, the Q-Dogs, uh, Omega Sci-Fi, <laughs> Um, it's important to know these organizations because soon we're about to have a president that represents one of them. And, uh, um, but I really want to thank um, my sister Christina who's here today. Many of you have heard. Where's she hiding? Right here. Right here. Oh, I love you. And I want to thank you. Um, I'm one of 11 children. And in 2017, I had the worst year of my life. I lost a brother to gun violence, and my sister gave birth to her daughter, Mila, who didn't make it. And as a big sister, you always want to help. You always want to find the solutions. But then, I didn't know the words. I didn't know anything about the black maternal health crisis. I didn't know that we didn't listen to birthing people, um, because I don't have children of my own. But my sister and her story, and her daughter, Mila, really inspired me to work hard on an issue that I knew nothing about. I came in this building, I didn't know how to write a piece of legislation. Now eight bills have been passed, and I'm super excited for all of you who have helped me. Um, I wanna thank, I didn't know my goddaughter would be here. Skyla, I just want you to know that you could do hard things, um, and watch us all, we're doing this for you and for your generation so that not only will we be able to give birth in, in peace and safety in healthy communities, but that you one day, long, long after college, <laughs> um, can have a safe birth yourself. Um, I also want to shout out my sister Stephanie, who lost her child, 
then had a, a rainbow baby who introduced me to proper city and has struggled and continues to struggle with postpartum depression for the past six years. My cousin Maria, who needed a doula and spent thousands of dollars to have one. My homegirl, Jamina, who almost lost her life due, birth, due to birth trauma and not being listened to, and now has a huge scar on her tummy to remind her. And all the precious babies and loved ones we have lost and who, who have faced birth trauma, who were not listened to, who didn't feel safe, who didn't have access to a doula, a midwife, an OBGYN that understood them, or access to a birth center. It is with this immense gratitude and understanding about the responsibility that we all have as legislators. We also get to revel in this moment of progress, celebrating our monumental commitment to improving the quality of life, maternal and mental health care for our most at-risk constituents. A couple months ago, the governor and the lieutenant governor told us the black women, sad to say that we were actually the outcomes for us and mortality and morbidity had worsened, and you did something about it, and I'm so proud to be your partner in this work. With this bill signing today, we are taking this crucial first step in tackling the black maternal health crisis by expanding the perinatal, postpartum, mental health, midwifery, doula care, while enabling the growth of freestanding birth centers across the Commonwealth. I want to extend another heartfelt thank you to that 28-member commission on the Special Legislative Commission. And I want to thank uh, Representative Decker. Thank you for chairing that. And Senator Comerford. It was a long road, but we did it. And three years ago, three years ago, we talked to thousands of people across the Commonwealth, and we produced this report. And like Representative Brandy Fluka Oakley said, it didn't sit on a shelf. It didn't sit on a shelf. We took those recommendations. We kept working on a bill, and we're here today, three years later, after that first meeting of that commission. And the coalition of advocates, who've now become friends, who had unwavering support to see this bill through the end. Together, we are advancing prairie natal care and ensuring better health outcomes for individuals and families across this great commonwealth. And I'm proud to share this moment with all of you there and all of you behind me. Today is also for the lives we're going to save, the things that will be done differently, the women who will actually listen to, the OBGYNs who will work on their cultural competence, the birth centers that will open so we just don't have just one or two, but we can have a state full of them in every corner of the Commonwealth. It is for the doulas who will be there through labor and delivery and not stopped at the door. And the positive memories we will actually make in the Commonwealth for years to come. I want to end by saying this is for you, black women. After suffering through generations of obstetric violence, of racism, and the weathering in our communities, like First Lady Obama said, hope is making a comeback. We have heard you, we have heard you, we are among you, and improved maternal health benefits actually benefits the whole of society. And our best days lie ahead. And I just want to thank you all for being here today on this momentous day, and now to our great governor, Governor Healy. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's go sign this bill, huh?